Welcome to another session in our Women Lead webinar series brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Michelle Berquist, your moderator today, as we're delighted to bring yet another informative webinar to our Association of Professional Women. Our Women Lead webinars are designed for you as the professional leader in business, whether you are an aspiring female leader or a woman leading people or projects or teams, or even a company or a business. Our goal is to select topics and themes that support your goal to lead, achieve, and succeed more effectively in business and in life. Our webinar is just shy of one hour, and at the half hour mark, we'll be answering any questions that you've submitted online during the presentation portion of our webinar. I'm excited about the title of our webinar today because so many of our members have questions about that infamous thing called social security. So our title today is the social security puzzle, putting the pieces together. And we have an incredible thought leader, I'm going to say today. She's muy infamosa, somebody I totally adore. And that is um, our, our wonderful, wonderful thought leader today is a financial advisor and retirement specialist. And she is Michelle Farrell, and she is the founder of MKM Advisors. And I'm going to give you just a little bit of information about our incredible thought leader, just so you know that you're in a good place. Michelle's passion and her mission is to lead, inspire, and educate the community about financial literacy and to provide the tools necessary to lead a life of financial freedom. Heck yes, that's what we all want. By helping individuals understand how money works, they maximize growth, protect their nest egg, and leave a legacy for generations to come. Through her educational approach, like today, uh, Michelle empowers her clients to protect their dreams and live their purpose. Michelle does not believe in a cookie cutter process. Her focus is to make sure that your plan is customized and tailored specifically to your goals, your dreams, and your aspirations. The people that Michelle serves will learn how to budget, how to protect themselves and their families, to save for retirement, to minimize taxes and maximize social security, like the topic today. There are so many pieces to the puzzle, but Michelle enjoys taking the many pieces and putting them, I love this, into one beautiful picture. So Michelle, welcome to Women Lead Webinars and let's hear what you have to share with us, I'm excited. Great, thank you, Michelle, and I'm excited to be uh, able to share this information about Social Security because it is such a daunting topic for many. Yes. So before we get down to the the nitty gritty, just want to go over a couple of disclosures. Um, you know, any advisory or security services I offer is through Oregon Pacific Financial. I'm also an independent um, and licensed insurance agent. I don't provide accounting, legal, or tax advice, but I do work with your CPAs and your state planning attorneys if necessary. If you'd like more information about this, reach to, out to me after the webinar. Um, so let's talk about the one piece called Social Security because it is just one piece of your overall retirement picture. So if we take everything together, what we do is we put them together, we got like your piggy bank or your savings, your financial savings. So you have social security, you have everybody's second favorite topic of taxes, you have investments, pension for those that are lucky to still have them. Um, and so today we're gonna be talking about social security and how they touch a couple of the different parts of the puzzle. But if you notice, if you take that social security piece out, well, you, you could be missing the bacon on the, on the pig, and in my opinion, that's the best part. So we wanna make sure that we're looking at the entire picture. So let me ask you this question. If what you thought to be true turned out not to be, when would you want to know? And my answer is, my hope for you is your answer is now. So let's talk about some of the most common questions I get asked. Will it be there for me? And how do I maximize my benefits? Throughout this webinar, I'm hoping that we're gonna answer some of those for you. I'm gonna go ahead and tackle that first one. I'm not a fortune teller if I was, I would um, be a lot richer than I am today. Um, but in my opinion, and you hear experts in the industry talk, it's going to be there for us. Politicians love to get reelected too much to, to completely 
um, disband or get rid of Social Security because we pay into it every single time we get a paycheck or at the end of the year and we're paying our employment taxes, we're paying into social security. What I think it will do is, I think it's going to evolve over the years. Social security was first founded or wrote into law by President Roosevelt back in 1935. And one of the very first payments that went out to a widower um, was in the amount of $29 and change. So it's evolved over the past, got 90 years, next, next decade will be around for 100 years. So what we look at is how will it be there for me and how do I maximize those benefits? So what are we gonna cover in this webinar? The basics of social security, when and how to claim social security, what are Medicare premiums and how do they affect my social security and social security and taxes? So remember, information is good. Information, and when you understand it, is even better. But when you take information, you understand it, and then you go into action, that's the best. Albert Einstein said something like, information or knowledge is power, but only when applied. So the thing is to take this information and then sit down with a financial advisor to find out how to apply it. So let's start with when and how to claim Social Security. So the one thing you're going to want to know is this term primary insurance amount, or PIA. It's the basis of what most Social Security benefits are derived from. Um, and it's derived over your, your lifetime earnings record. You need 40 quarters to qualify for Social Security, which is 10 years. Um, and it doesn't have to be consecutive years. Um, as women, um, a lot of times we'll start in the workforce. We may take some time off to be able to take care of children, to take care of um, our parents. So it doesn't have to be consecutive years. You just have to have those 40 total quarters. And it, it is the benefit a person would receive if he or she begins to elect receiving benefits at full retirement age. So it's basically, let's look at this little, this little graphic here. Um, it's what, where your benefit sets the base amount you'll get for the rest of your life. So social security is once you choose it, once you decide to pull the trigger, that's it. You don't get a, you don't get a do over. Um, so you get to choose where you do like lower monthly payments for a longer period of time or higher monthly payments over a shorter period of time. And so those are some of the things we're going to cover today. So if you want to know what your monthly benefit estimate will be and when your full retirement age is, just go to ssa.gov. You can set up an account very easy. It's free and they'll give you your statement. So what are the things we want to consider when we are looking at when do we want to pull Social Security? When do we want to pull that trigger? Um, are you working? Are you, will you work after the age of 62 um, and before your full retirement age? Do you plan on working longer? Longevity, how is your health? Have you had a heart attack? Are you a cancer survivor? Are you overweight? Um, do you have diabetes? And how long did your parents and your grandparents live? Did you know, did you, my, for example, my dad passed away when he was 52 and all my, my grandparents didn't make it past 70. I have friends that have parent, grandparents that are living into their 90s and hundreds. So those are things that we want to look at is longevity part of your family history. And are you married? And were you previously married? So we're going to go over why these considerations make sense for you. So let's talk about um, really quick an early versus late benefit election. So let's assume that your full retirement age, which means the age you're going to get 100% of your benefit is 66 years old and that amount is $2,000 per month. And you decide, you know what? Um, I'm 62 and I wanna retire and I want, I'm entitled to my social security and I want it to take it today. Well, you get penalized 25% for the rest of your life if you decide to take social security early. So instead of getting $2,000 at age 66, You'll get $1,500 at 62, 
and the inflation and estimate that COLA cost of living adjustment will be based on the benefit you got at 62. Remember, once you pick that benefit, that is your base for the rest of your life. And then each year you wait to get closer to your full retirement age, the penalty gets a little bit less and a little bit less. So if you use that social security calculator, it will tell you what the difference is year to year. And then let's say 66 is when you get your full retirement benefit, but let's say you're still working. Maybe you have income coming in from other resources. So you decide to wait. Well, each year after age 66 or your full retirement age or FRA, you get an 8% increase on that $2,000. So if you waited that whole four years, that's a 32% increase. Or at age 70, now you're getting a $2,640 Social Security benefit. So why, why are those questions important? Well, we got to find out how long do you need to take Social Security? You know, this, when it, how old is your spouse? Because these are some of the concerns that we think about when we're making those decisions at age 60 versus 66 or 70 or somewhere in between. What does inflation look like? Nationally, on average, it's about 3% a year. We look at October, it was over 6% a year. So we want to make sure that we're not just getting by, by the skin on our teeth. We want to look at is Social Security cost of living adjustments going to be enough? What are my Medicare premiums? Because those go up a little bit each year. And what is my income tax bracket? All of these things make a difference when you're looking at maximizing your Social Security benefit. So think about it. You build all these assets up. You want to maximize your investments and your IRAs and your 401k and your Roth. You want to maximize your home value. You want to maximize your earning potentials, but you forget about Social Security, and it's such an important piece of your retirement. That's why all of this matters. So one of the things to think about is your life expectancy, which nobody really, everybody's, you know, it's funny. I sit down with people and people are like, man, like, I, like once I retire, like I'm good. I don't want to live into my nineties and everybody. And I have other people like, man, I would love to live into my nineties. I'd love to see like my great, great grandchildren born. But social security bases your benefit on the assumption that if you're a healthy 66 year old, if you're a man, you're going to live until age 83. And if you're female, you're going to live until 86. So let's look at some of these things that we look at. So if you're healthy, you have a 50% chance living of age beyond age 88 and 25% chance living age 94. And female, it's 90 and 96 respectively. And did you know that if you're a healthy couple, then you have a 50% chance of both of you living beyond the age of 94 and one of you living into your hundreds? Did you know that there's a, that doctors say that somebody that was born today is going to live to age 150? Well, this is important because one of the things you, when you're talking about just retirement income in general is, is my income going to outlast me? Like, I don't want to be 90 years old, not able to work anymore and then run out of money. So maximizing your social security is really important. And we can't predict the future, but we can make educated guess on how long we're going to live. So let's say you're like, you know what, I want to take that full retire or my, my social security at age 62. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm still going to work full time. Well, did you know that your social security benefit will get reduced $1 by every two you earn? above 18960 so you're basically being penalized for making $19,000 and above before you hit your full retirement age. So let's say you hit your full retirement age, then it's only going to be reduced or before you hit. So the year you hit, say your full retirement age is 66 and your birthday is in August, you hit January of that, that year, 
well, between that and your birthday month of August, they're going to allow you to make some more money. They're going to allow you to make up to $50,520. And they're only going to take $1 for every three that you make. But once you hit that full retirement age, there's no reduction. So if you're still working full time, then it makes sense to possibly not touch your social security. Um, and what they consider income is work, W-2, or self-employment income. So let's say now you're married, and I'm gonna I'm going through pieces kind of bit by bit, but then I'm gonna I'm gonna land the I'm gonna land the plane when we get through all of this information. So let's talk about married couples. So the spousal benefit is based on 50% of the other spouse's PIA, their primary insurance amount. So let's use that $2,000 um, that we've been talking about. So let's say this is Sam and Ann. So let's say Sam's PIA is $2,000 and Ann's then would be $1,000 a month, assuming that they both waited until age 66 to take this. And you're entitled to benefits if for your ex-spouse, and we'll talk about ex-spouses in a minute, if you, um, if, if your, your spouse is entitled. So that means that Sam needs to apply in order for Anne to get any kind of benefit. You're not entitled to file to a higher benefit. So let's say Anne is entitled to, to a higher benefit, then she would have to take her higher benefit amount. Um, your file restricted application for spousal benefits, which most of that has actually been aged out of, and you're at least 62, and your benefit is discounted for early claiming. So if you've claimed early, you're going to hit that 20, up to a 25% penalty. So a lot of people don't know this, but if you are divorced, you still could claim off of your ex's benefit. A couple of things have to happen. You must be married for at least 10 years. You have to be divorced for at least two. After two years, you have to have an independent claim, which means that you're filing on your own because you can't be unmarried. So let's look at Anne and Sam. Let's say Anne is the second wife. We got um, Joan over here who is unmarried, um, been married. They were married for at least 10 years, been divorced for at least two. Then Joan over here could apply for Sam's benefits and it won't affect Sam or Ann's benefits at all. However, if Joan decided he's gonna marry, she's gonna marry somebody else, then she can't pick which spouse or ex-spouse she wanted to choose. She has to stay with her married spouse's benefits, even if they're less. So let's talk about survivor benefits because a lot of people don't know how this works. So your unmarried children under 18 can be eligible. And I know that sounds weird to say unmarried children, but remember these benefits were started back in 1935. So I kind of say it as they were written into the Medicare law. Your widow or widower can receive your benefits um, or a custodial parent of a ch child under 16 spouse could receive a benefit, which doesn't apply most of the time anymore. Um, a spousal survivor benefit can be claimed as early, early as age 60. So my mom, my dad passed away when he was 52. By the time my mom hit age 60, my dad would have been at full retirement age. So she was able to capture 100% of his benefits, widower's survivor benefits at age 60. And if you are collecting, you get the larger benefit between your amount and your, your spouse's amount. So my mom was on my dad's until age 70, and then her benefit exceeded what his was. So then she switched over to her own benefit and got a larger amount. You forfeit the smaller. So a lot of people think you get both. My mom would not have been able to collect her benefit and my dad's. She got to choose either or, and whichever one was the biggest. So let's talk about Social Security and taxes, which is everybody, taxes is everybody's favorite subject. I'm not going to go through this in a lot of detail. Just know that you potentially could pay taxes 
on your social security income. So if you, um, and your provisional income is adjusted gross income, including any tax exempt interest, plus 50% of your social security benefits. So let's look at somebody that's married. So let's look at the orange boxes here. And let's say between the two of them, they made over $44,000 uh, a year. And let's say their social security benefits between the two of them um, was $10,000 a year, just to make math simple. Well, then up to 85% of that social security money or $8,500 could have been taxed. So it's important to understand what your tax situation is going to be at the same time you're deciding if you want to use social security because you don't want your social security benefits going right back to Uncle Sam. So again, provisional income is your adjusted uh, gross income, tax-free interest, and 50% of your social security benefits. And that excludes Roth accounts and life insurance. Another thing is to think about where you live because the states in purple are the states that tax social security income. So if you live in California, it's the one thing they don't tax is your social security income. When you decide to move to New Mexico, they're going to tax your benefits. So just something to keep in mind when you, if you are moving um, from state to state in retirement. Now, this is another big thing that a lot of advisors don't truly understand is how Medicare premiums affect your, not only your social security check, but the income you need to be able to um, pay for those premiums. So if you get a social security check, they'll take your Medicare premium right out of your check and you'll get deposited monthly your, the difference. So if you make, and so for example, if you make um, less than 88,000 as a single person or 176,000 as a married person, each person would pay $148.50 in 2021. In 2022, there's a big increase of to $170.10. And then if you notice these income brackets, you have to pay more for those benefits based on that income. And so if you have two people and you're drawing over $222,000, next year you could be paying almost um, $700 in Medicare benefits. So it's important to be able to plan for that. And that doesn't include if you have any additional premium that's due for your plan, especially if it's a Medicare supplement, because sometimes those can run up to another $200 a month. So it's really important to make sure you plan for that as you're looking at your premiums. And when you're deciding how much money to take in an annual basis, you might wanna decide to pay a little, take a little bit less because of how much more you'll have to pay for Medicare. So let's look at some of the benefits at different ages. We'll say 62, that's the earliest you could pull Social Security when both spouses are alive. 66 right now is the average uh, full retirement age for people that are in that age range. And then age 70 is the last year you could get that 8% increase. So we got Scott and Joan. And all these are going to fill in. So remember I said there's that 25% penalty if you take at age 62. So if you look at Scott, if um, his full retirement benefit would be $2,214, 25% of that is the $1,550. Same, the same goes for Joan. I like this example because Joan makes more money than her husband. And that's what we're all about here in CWI is empowering women. So let's say here, this is the most common strategy. Um, most, both couples are age 62, they're the same age. They take the benefit off of, um, they take their full benefit. Their total monthly income would be $3,302. Let's say a month after retirement, God forbid, Scott dies. Well, now all of a sudden, Joan's monthly income decreased by $1,550. 
because Scott, they're not getting Scott's benefit and or she's not getting Scott's any benefit anymore. This is where full financial planning is very important because this is where you need life insurance to supplement that income. So let's say we decided to let them claim, like they're not gonna claim until their full retirement age of age 66. So now this is where they've got the most options available. They're gonna go ahead and take Scott's at $2,214. Joan's gonna claim her spousal benefit. She's not gonna touch hers because she wants that to, to earn that extra 8% until age 70. So now their total benefit is $3,321 a month. They wait until age 70. Joan's like, I'm gonna pull my, my full benefit. I'm gonna forfeit my spousal benefit. So Scott is at $2,214. Joan's at $3,304. $3, and now they're, they're getting over $5,500 in social security benefits. They just got a $2,200 benefit increase because of the fact that they waited those four years and they used other retirement assets and didn't tap on that social security. God forbid Scott dies, Joan's still getting $3,304. So this is why it's so important to make sure you're claiming in the right order as well. So remember I said social security is just a small piece of the puzzle. We put it together. We talked a little bit about taxes. We'll talk a little bit about IRAs and 401ks and Roths and pensions and how a whole retirement kind of picture comes together. We talked about health care. So as you could see, as we went through a lot of information, it starts to put the pieces of all of this puzzle together. So let's talk about what your most valuable asset is. Most people like my most valuable asset is my home. Well, the national average of a home right now in 2021 is just over $400,000. But if you claim the right Social Security benefit, you can have a lifetime of over $854,000. So that's almost, that's double what the, your most valuable asset is. Now, I know in California, they expect the value of homes to go over $800,000 but your home doesn't create an income for you unless you do something like a reverse mortgage, which could be a benefit, but it's not gonna give you that guaranteed lifetime income. So let's look at your retirement landscape. You got your retirement accounts, which are your IRAs or your individual retirement agreements, your 401ks, your 403bs. These are the things you put into to save specifically for retirement. Then you got your bank's accounts, your CDs, your bonds, your real estate, your stocks. So these are all taxed a little bit different. We look over at this orange buck, this orange bald circle over here. You don't see as much corporate or government pensions unless you're a teacher, you work for the government, but corporate pensions are very far and few between anymore. And then you've got Social Security and Medicare. So you want to look at how am I going to put all of these pieces together? So there's some income options. You have social security, you have Roth conversions, you have uh, portion protected from market losses, whether it become cash value, life insurance or annuities. You have income producing options. Maybe you have some real estate um, rental income that's coming in. Maybe you have some residual bus uh, business income coming in. You have uh, a portfolio that is full of dividend income paying dividends. Um, you wanna make sure you, you create a strategy for tax efficient withdrawals because you don't wanna take money out and then turn around and pay it to Uncle Sam. The, the option or the choices here, we wanna make sure you're putting more of it into your pocket and less going back to, back to um, the IRS. So when we're looking at your retirement savings in particular, we're looking at the IRA or the 401k, the Roth and um, options and your investments. So let's look at what these mean for options for you. You have your traditional IRAs or your 401ks. Most people are familiar with this. This is what you generally get through your employer. 
you get that tax deduction today. So you're not paying taxes on the money you contribute today. Do you pull that money out? Um, you pay 100% ordinary income taxes on the contributions and the gains. And then you have investments. Um, so you've paid taxes on the contribution. So when you pull the contributions out, you don't pay taxes on it again, but the gains are subject to capital gains taxes. And then you've got your Roth um, or your tax deferred growth. So you've already paid taxes on the money that's in that account. When you go to pull that money out, you don't have to pay taxes on it again. So we're looking at when's the best time to maximize my, you know, my social security. When do I want to pull money out from these different income sources, whether it be your, your IRAs and your 401ks versus a Roth or versus investments. So we want to look at your overall picture because if we pull something out of say your 401k or your IRA and you're, you're still earning original um, ordinary income and then you start pulling social security, you could really jack yourself up into a 30 or 40% tax bill. You wanna make sure we avoid that. So then we look at what is your retirement landscape? You worked really hard to accumulate all of this money while you're living. And you're like, man, I'm gonna live the life of my dreams in retirement. So we look at what is your spending and how long are you going to live? We want to make sure that you do not outlive your money. That's one of my primary goals or any financial advisor's goal when we're sitting down with a client in retirement is we want to make sure that their money outlives them. So we look at what is your current spending. And then when you hit that first stage, a lot of people are on the go. They're like, I'm going to do my traveling. I'm going to go visit my kids. I'm going to go travel with my grandkids. I'm going to set up maybe savings for those grandkids so they could go to college. So you may have a spike in spending sometimes. So we want to make sure we look at what are some of those goals during that kind of that go-go stage. And then you have your slow go stage. Now you're just kind of, you're staying at home, your kids and your grandkids are coming to you. You're not really, there's no kind of lifestyle ups and downs when it comes to spending. But then now you're in your late 80s and 90s and you're in the no-go. Like you're not traveling anymore, but maybe now you've had some heart conditions. Maybe you have something where you need some home health. Now all of a sudden you have a big, big, big peak in your spending. So we wanna make sure we're doing some risk management for you. We're putting things into the place. So God forbid something happens with your health or one of you passes away prematurely we're able to protect your retirement portfolio overall. So taking social security, what you have in income producing, we look at your retirement landscape. This is where we say, at this point, we're gonna take your IRA money from your IRAs. And then now we're gonna start taking your social security. We're gonna take less from your IRAs. Now we're gonna add taking some money from your Roth. And this is where we really start putting all of the puzzle pieces together. Lots of information I know is like hitting, getting hit with a fire hose, but I wanted to keep it short and concise for you. Again, my name is Michelle Farrell. If you have any questions, if you want to talk about this more, here is my information. Feel free to reach out to me. I would love to be of service for you. Michelle, that was awesome. So um, we have lots of questions, just so you know. So here's your applause. I know everyone can't hear me, but um, I'm giving you applause. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we have a lot of questions. And uh, one of the ones, I think you'll find some of these funny, but here's our first one. It was more of a comment, but um, this was uh, Lucy and she wrote down good, better, best, this was most bestest. So there you go on that one. So a little <laughs> applause there. Um, one question we've got, you had mentioned, uh, here's, uh, this is from Barbara, and Barbara said, how do you, how do you, I used to get my statement for Social Security, I haven't seen one in a long time, how do I find my benefit statement? That's a great question. Um, it's all online now, so um, just to let, kind of give it a little bit of perspective, in 1937, there was 53,000 beneficiaries. Today, there are over 65 million people on Social Security. Imagine how many trees would need to go out just to get benefit statements to those that were getting Social Security. 
So what they've done is they've made it all online. So again, if you go to www.ssa.gov backslash my statements, or if you just start there, you create yourself an account you would be able to log in and they use your tax information to be able to give you a specific benefit amount. Oh, okay, great. So that answers that question. And then um, this one's from Carly and she said, what is the full retirement age again to wait till? Oh, that's a great question. So it depends on your age. So most people that are in retirement in their 60s right now, their full retirement age is 66. For example, I'm 47. My full retirement age is 67 and three months. My guess is that people in their 30s and 20s, their full retirement age may end up being closer to 68 or 69. There's even talks that it's going to be pushed out to 72. So it's a very specific question based on what your really what your birthday is. Wow. Is that, and this is my question then, Michelle, is that available on the, yes. whatever your age is that's on that, you said the yes. security administration side, it'll keep you up to date on that? Yeah. And once they, um, to my knowledge, once you have your full retirement date there, um, especially if you're close to retirement, that date's pretty locked in. Now, if you're in your 40s and, and younger, um, my, my personal opinion is that that may change. Um, they may push that out. Mine, for example, is, is 67 and three months. It may get pushed out to 67 and nine months or 68. Um, just because people are living longer and they're, they're taking so much more from the social security bucket. Yeah, wow. Okay, and then you had mentioned... Um, Oh my gosh, this is from Jane. And Jane says, you mentioned a social security calculator. Is that is that like an app yeah. or something? Or that's um, not what she said, but she said social security calculator, question mark where? So that's a good question. There are some online, but I have some, I have access to some proprietary uh, software that I use. So when I go and do somebody's financial plan, I plug in. Um, I have them go pull the report off of social security, tell them, I'm like at age 67, tell me what your, they say your full retirement benefit is. And then I plug in, okay, that's what that is. This is the amount of money they have in their 401k. This is the average rate of return they have. These are other investments. I plug in all of these numbers and then the software gets to work and says, well, based on, you know, potential tax consequences, longevity, um, and I get to kind of put all these numbers in. It says, you know, I would, you know, recommend, you know, pulling Social Security out at age 67 or wait until age 70. Um, and so we're able to run that report and get that specific to the client. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, okay. You're hanging with me, right? We got more questions. Yes. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I was like, did you go away? I'm like, oh my God. Um, okay, so confirm there is no reduction in social security once you're 67 years old, correct? You can, it, what she said was, and this was, um, this was Paula, she said you can still work, but no reduction, right? If that is your full retirement age, yes. So right. yeah, so if it's your full retirement age and you're still working, there is no reduction. Got it. This was one, um, I thought this was an interesting question. So, you know, thanks Linda for this one. So she said, I'm recently married. My, my spouse is collecting social security. If he dies, do I get his survivor benefits? Yes. She didn't say if she was at social security age or not, but you answered that, right? That the yes. of benefit is what you get, right? Right, right. So you can claim survivor benefits as early as age 60. So if she's 48 and he passed, so for example, my mom was um, 39 when my dad passed away. She wasn't able to claim survivor benefits until age 60. Now, if you have minor children under the age of 18, they would be entitled to survivor benefits, but the spouse can't claim it until age 60. 
And, and Michelle, this was something, I mean, this was kind of an add on to this question that I've heard from through the rumor patrol, which is not the place to listen to, but somebody told me, or I heard that if you're getting uh, survivor benefits, you don't get 100% of the social security benefits. Is that right? That is not correct. That's the, that's the one time you don't take a penalty for taking survivor benefits early. That's good. Yeah, no, I've heard that more than multiple times. So how weird is that? All right. Um, let's see here. Next question. Oh, wow. This is an interesting one. Okay. Ooh, this is a big one. And I've seen these too. And this one is, <laughs> I'm going to give her props. So, um, I want to thank, uh, the lovely Linda again, because she said, I've seen these commercials. I should get what I'm entitled to. And I've seen these commercials and they talk about, you know, I should get dental, blah, 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 all this stuff. I'm like, I don't know, like doc, dental, like delivery services. All, and those are, those are supplemental benefits, right? Can you talk a little bit about that? Like what, what is that? How do I get what I'm entitled to is what Linda said. Yeah, because we're in, it's November right now, and you're seeing all those Medicare, I'm, I'm guessing she's referring to all the Medicare um, commercials, like, I just got an extra, you know, $140. Yeah, I, in, I'm guessing know, too. Yeah. yeah, and so not to dive into the weeds of Medicare too, too greatly, but you have several parts to Medicare, but your basics are part A, which is hospitalization, part B, which is your doctor visits, and part D, which is your prescription medication, your drug plan. You take the three of those put together and you get part C, which is a Medicare Advantage plan. And a Medicare Advantage plan is generally an HMO. It could be a PPO as well, depending on what state and region you live in. Um, but sometimes to be competitive, what happens is, um, We'll say, we'll say ABC Insurance has so much money to provide benefits for. And in their particular area, they're like, you know what? Our, our particular region, there's a lot of healthy people. They don't go to the doctor very often. So what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to give them a rebate on their, premium, their insurance premiums. So we'll give you, they'll, they'll refund back, you know, $50 a month. Um, other areas, regions may say, you know what, you know, travel's really hard. We got a lot of people that don't have kids nearby. This is one of the things ben the members request a lot. So they'll provide, you know, 21 way trips to the doctor or to the hospital or to therapy or something like that. Sometimes they'll be like, you know what, we want some access because we have like a lot of over the counter prescriptions, vitamins, um, you know, incontinence um, stuff, maybe they have, um, you know, and we need a high blood pressure cuff. So what some companies, insurance companies will do is they'll like, we'll give you like uh, $200 a quarter to, to spend at a pharmacy and we'll give you a, a basically a catalog to go spend that money where you can pick up, you know, your iron supplements, your, um, if you need to go get a new cane or if you, you need to take baby aspirin because that's not necessarily a prescription. And so it gives them some extra money to pay for medical care or medical things or health care um, items that wouldn't necessarily be a prescription. Um, so it really depends on the region um, where you're at and what insurance company you go with, because insurance ABC may give those, those rebates back where um, insurance company, you know, yellow will then give you you know, $200 for over-the-counter care every quarter, and, um, and or it could be a combination of both. So when we do a Medicare um, kind of review, we look at, you know, what doctors do you have? What prescriptions do you use? What are some additional services that we need? And we can match you up with the right insurance company. And it may not be the same for you and your spouse, depending on your health stuff. So spouse A may have insurance company ABC and spouse B may have insurance company yellow. Um, so it's looking at those different things. And so is sometimes, that, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say some people like they have, you know, for example, not endorsing this insurance company, but their entire work life and through their employer, they have Blue Shield as their, as their insurance company. Well, Blue Shield may no longer be the right choice for them and under a Medicare scenario. Right. 
Well, you know, something, uh, here's another question from Joyce, similar to this one. Do you, for supplemental benefits, should you, those are renewed every year. I do know that. But her question is, it's like, should you shop it out every year? Yeah, definitely. Uh, because insurance plans update things all of the time. They may offer like, you know what, we'll give those 20, those 20, you know, visits um, where we'll pick you up and we'll give you rights. Um, and then they're like, you know what, nobody's using the service. You know, only 10% of our, of our members are using the service. So we're going to discontinue this. And now we're going to go ahead and offer those over the counter or vice versa. They also, insurance companies get different funding every year um, based on how good of an insurance company they are and how many members that they have and how many members use their benefits. And so their funding may change. So co-pays may change. Doctors will sometimes say, yeah, I want to contract with this insurance company. And then they leave the service or mm -hmm. leave that insurance company. So you're like, you know what? I don't want to change doctors. If I stay with ABC insurance, now I have to change my primary care doctor. I have to change my cardiologist. I don't want to go through that. So I'm going to go with, you know, company yellow over here so I could keep all of my same doctors. Wow. I didn't know that. Um, that's a good question, Joyce. Um, here's last question. Um, oh, here's a comment. Love the comment about women making more money. <laughs> <laughs> like right on, sister. I thought that too. Um, and last question, do I pay to get this kind of advice on when to retire and make a plan and, and social security? I'm not quite understanding, but I'm assuming they're saying, do you, do you, do you pay to, to do this, to get this kind of advice? That's a great question. Myself, personally, I don't charge for financial planning unless it gets super, super complex. Not all of some advisors will charge an hourly or a flat rate to do a financial plan. Uh, so, you know, make sure you ask your whatever advisor that you would like to sit down with to see what fees that they have before you um, make that appointment. A lot of them will at least do a 10 minute consultation to see if it even makes sense. I love that. And Michelle, can you go back to your slide with your contact information? So I just want to say again. You know, if anybody got some great insight, which I did, <laughs> I'm getting to that age. I know in CWI, we have a lot of questions of members that are like, who do I go to about social security? And trust me, I went through this with my husband. You do not want to go to a social security office. I'm just saying, um, Michelle, thank you for being our thought leader today. And I want to say to our attendees and our viewers, you know, gosh, thank you for joining us because we'll be back again with another Women Lead webinar series. And you know, again, our focus is on how to not only, you know, uh, learn how you can lead and achieve and succeed as a better female leader in business, but, you know, life interweaves with business. So thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you again.